Respiratory substrates. Amino acids can enter the Krebs cycle. If there are excess amino acids, they are deaminated in the liver, and this produces organic acids, or keto acids. These can enter as pyruvate, acetyl-CoA, or oxaloacetate. Other than excess amino acids, proteins are not generally used in respiration unless there is no other substrate left, and then muscles are used as a source of amino acids in this case, but usually only during starvation. Fatty acids and glycerol can also be used as respiratory substrates. Glycerol can be converted to triphosphate and then to pyruvate. Fatty acids can use a molecule of ATP to combine with coenzyme A. This is then oxidized, and this produces 2-acetyl-CoA and some reduced NAD and FAD. The acetyl groups are released from the coenzyme A, and they combine with the oxaloacetate, and so they enter the Krebs cycle here. Respiratory proteins. The respiratory substrates we looked at have different energy values. And this depends on the amount of hydrogen ions they contain. Lipids have the highest number of hydrogen atoms per unit of mass, so they have the highest energy value at 39.4 kg uh, kilojoules per gram. Proteins are in the middle, they have about 17 kilojoules per gram, and carbohydrates have the lowest at 50.8 kilojoules per gram. The reason is because if they have more hydrogen atoms, then more NAD and FAD molecules can be reduced using these protons. So more ATP can be made through oxidative phosphorylation. We can calculate the respiratory quotient of a substrate using the formula volume of carbon dioxide released divided by the volume of oxygen consumed. This can also be calculated using the molecules of carbon dioxide released and the number of molecules of oxygen consumed as well. We need to know the respiratory quotient values in general for lipids, which is 0.7, proteins, 0.9, and carbohydrates, 1. These respiratory quotients can be used to tell what substrates an organism has been using to respire and if they're doing aerobic or anaerobic respiration. In humans, an RQ value higher than 1 suggests anaerobic respiration is occurring. Plants tend to have a low respiratory quotient because the carbon dioxide released is used up in photosynthesis. Investigating respiration rates. One way is by measuring carbon dioxide production. So you can take a solution of yeast and we can place that in a tube in a water bath and this water bath is helps to control temperature. Then we can collect the gas using a gas syringe so we can calculate the volume of carbon dioxide that has been produced. We can make this an anaerobic respiration experiment by adding a layer of oil onto the top of the yeast to prevent any oxygen from reaching them. This method allows you to analyse both aerobic and anaerobic respiration because they both produce carbon dioxide. You can calculate the volume collected divided by the time to calculate the rate of reaction. You should set up a control experiment, either with no yeast in the solution or with dead yeast, which you can achieve by boiling some yeast. You can measure various independent variables with this method. Could be the temperature, which you could vary with the water bath. You could change the substrate type or concentration in the yeast solution. Another way measures oxygen consumption. This uses a respirometer and a manometer. This method can use small organisms such as insects or seeds. You can see the apparatus set up here at the start and at the end of the experiment. The organism is inside a conical flask and is suspended above some potassium hydroxide. The potassium hydroxide absorbs any carbon dioxide released in respiration. You can see that the liquid in the manometer has moved upwards between the start and the end of the experiment and it's moved towards the flask. This is because as oxygen is being used up by the organism inside the conical flask, the pressure is lowered and the flask pressure is lower than the manometer pressure, so the liquid moves towards the flask. You can record this movement on the ruler of the manometer 
And if you know the diameter of the tube, you can use this to also calculate volume. You can then calculate the rate by measuring the distance the liquid moved or the volume of liquid moved divided by the time. For a control for this experiment, you'd need to have something that was the same mass, but that wouldn't be carrying out respiration. So glass beads or dead seeds, for example. You can also change the independent variable, similar to the previous experiment. Instead of using one of these machines, you could also use an oxygen sensor that was electronic and would sit inside the flask. 